Hello everyone, my name is Manish from MK Gaming, and today we're going to be checking out some overhead gameplay from NHL 22. Um, you know, we're finally getting it after, you know, the beta and everything for, you know, your uh, chill and everything. So, with that being said, um, yeah, you know, we're going to just get straight into it. We're not going to wait any longer. Let's see what this uh, 27 minutes of overhead gameplay is all about. Second of four of our community-led deep dives for NHL 22. You guys wanted to see some more gameplay, so today we're showcasing over 25 minutes of overhead gameplay for your viewing pleasure. We also worked with No Sleeves and Henrique to collect the top questions coming straight from you around gameplay and any concerns you had coming out of the closed technical test. Ben and Tyson from the gameplay team gave some great answers behind their thought process around NHL 22. I think you will find pretty insightful. The full Q&A actually goes on for over an hour and a half, so we've selected the top questions for YouTube, but we will have a full-length version up on Spotify, and you'll be able to find that link in the description. I'm now joined by Ben, Tyson, Henrique, and No Sleeves. Let's jump right into this, and I actually want to go ahead and ask the first question. For those who played the game early through the technical test, passing seemed to be a hot topic. People either love it, or they struggle with it. What changed with passing this year and what was the thinking behind that decision? That's definitely the big pressing question out of the tech test. I think that the general meta has been a bit polarizing. We often get from people that they want the game to, to feel like the game that they loved. At the same time, they challenge us to change it every single year. So for us, we always want to make the game more realistic. We always go back to what our community has said from the previous year, from competitive community, those looking for more realism, that kind of stuff, and then equate that back to kind of the real world NHL. So we aren't making a lot of decisions very often around just what's a game mechanic change we can make. We're always looking back at all those elements and trying to see where we might not be doing something that's expected based on how things work in the in the real world and then when that taps into what's happening with the meta within our game that's sort of the best case scenario because it means that people want that change regardless of sort of where you sit and sort of realism versus competitive play and that kind of stuff and then when we can tap into authenticity we try to do that as well so when it comes to passing we wanted to make sure that the tougher passes to make weren't just as easy as as the simpler ones so when you're powering up your passes or you're passing blind sort of behind yourself against your momentum you're not going to get as much pass assist as you did in the past there's also a lot more depth when it comes to player attributes um, also we have the introduction of x factors this year with some specific passing ones the high level was just to make sure that people could still equate these things to what they see in the real world nhl or when they're in the ice themselves so you obviously can't pass a pass as hard on your backhand as you can your forehand. It's tougher to make passes against your momentum. These are all things that we've had in our shot model before. So when we looked specifically at the call out for forced cross crease passes, we did want to make sure that those were more earned. So it comes down to player twitch skill and also all the pieces that, again, you can equate to what it means to pass in the real world. So a strong pass with your momentum and your forehand is obviously going to be far better than one. Ooh, nice save behind you. So that's, that's sort of the core piece there. And as we get into this, Tyson will be able to dive into what we've done with specific X factors, how the attributes went. You know, while he's talking. We to separate players from our I think we see the ice and, and the reflections and everything are nice. Like I, gameplay, that means for not too bad, you know. Well. Right, it felt guys, pretty good in the beta, but, but we'll see. We'll see how everything else turns out. On the passing from the post technical test that people either, you know, loved it or struggled with it. Specifically on receptions of the pass, so when players were receiving it, that seemed to be kind of universally maybe disliked. It just seemed like they weren't handling the puck cleanly. Do you agree with that? And is it something that you're going to focus on maybe adjusting before launch, or do you think it's working as intended? Yeah, I think it's tough for us because, like, over the years, and I think back to when we were trying to get ESHL, World of Chell stuff back going from NHL 16, and I thought back to even some of the goals that I had when I was running some stuff for gameplay in NHL 13 and 14 is that we really want to encourage team play, but we also want a lot of depth and we want the realism to be there. So it is a bit of a struggle for us to have passing and receptions differentiate players and not have people feel that we're discouraging team play. We don't want players just bobbling pucks for the sake of bobbling them. I know that we have a lot of players in the community that 
really tune in the sim aspects of game, especially when they're playing offline franchise. But it's really cool to check out kind of what some of those tunings look like as players try to increase period lengths and get realistic stats and that kind of stuff. But especially in the online competitive space, and when you've got maybe like 6v6 full online, we're not really looking to kind of discourage great team play and great playmaking. At the same time, defenders need to know what the most... Oh, beautiful. Are. If you can make a great cross-seam backhand pass tape the tape all the time, there isn't an advantage to kind of get a player to like close them off where they where they are, losing sort of their forehand or they're, or they're pushed into the corners or away from the, the sort of the momentum. Oh, of the my so God. We're trying to get as many of those elements... Can't gift the Leafs that. ...and to add more skill gap for players to have to work for what will um, bring them more success. But at the same time, we are taking... He's going to pass it. It's going to go sure in, of course. Marshan dumps it in. ...rewarding and encouraging team play over kind of the individual puck hog style and that kind of stuff. And you'll see that that comes through in how we tune the puck carrier and, and sort of what they can get away with as well. But it's, it's really all a sum of the parts. Wow. ...experience as we tune things. Well, I'm a ...information, guys, especially I'm a big on the removing of the auto sauce. I think that's a great change. And it kind of leads into my first question in regards to NHL 21, actually. Defensive pass intercepts in NHL 21 seem to be like non-existent uh, what was the cause of that and how has that changed in 22 it's always been an interesting one and I, I think the highest level piece it's good kind of talk to the community about I've kind of had some conversations on Twitter and sometimes some some like Twitter DMs with Ooh, some really passionate amazing and stuff I love those type of conversations great and little tip there like on our forums we, we Wow another stuff. tip Again, Foligno the, the keep forgetting he's gonna be on the Bruins kind of realism versus twitch skill when it comes to the competitive space. When it comes to the competitive side of our game, we often hear from a lot of players that they really want to make sure that everything that happens is because of a button that they pressed. And I would often get into these discussions with players about just rewarding positioning in general. Like how much is it something that I'm manually doing just by being in position, being in, in the right place to give myself enough reaction time in a passing lane versus manually pressing pass block or poke check to deflect a puck and, and that kind of thing. So we actually had turned off our old pass disruption model in the online space. So for players who played offline, you would have continued to see basically what were like these poke checks where players could defend passing lanes automatically, just the same as they would play an automatic pass reception or pickup, they would uh, poke pucks. But in the online space, because we were asked to um, generate a bigger skill gap, and especially when players would perform these actions when they didn't expect them, maybe it would disrupt their skating and that kind of thing. We, we turned them off. And I think it hit the goal of increasing the skill gap, but often we would receive those videos of pucks just going straight through players, players saying, well, why, are, why isn't my player reacting? And if people that played, I think it was last year's beta, oh. remember, at one point, pass receptions were too powerful. Players were re reaching behind oh, the car, Ratnan, come on. Let us come again. Whoa! We had the pass disruption. Ratnan with the power move. And Pickups like once players saw those and they saw that they were over. Oh my! It was obvious. McKinnon. We all watch real world hockey all the time and we, we know what's believable and what's realistic. And it's sort of our job, even though some things are heightened within a four minute period experience, we want people oh, it was to gonna get that all day. Time feeling like, hey, that's just like the hockey. That I oh my god, god McKinnon. So when somebody reaches behind their back and just like glue the puck stuck to their tape we all know that that's that's unrealistic and even if we want to see a player break up those passes it can't be done in that way otherwise it kind of breaks that overall realism and immersion to what is otherwise nice one timer so we didn't get him to be realistic wow what a blocker save where if you didn't receive the puck cleanly you wouldn't play an attempt at all so you would see players play pick up beautiful Shot by Meg Mac. Um, and because the pass disruptions and reflections were uh, turned, unless you were manually pressing block, using defensive skill stick. Nice, 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 nice. Oh! <laughs> Got a hat! They, they did think it increased the skill gap and they thought that they learned within the meta of the game how to overcome those things. And then there was other times where we continued to get sent footage saying like, hey, this puck went right Nice the defensive like, play. What am I supposed to do? And without getting into this whole sort of description that I had just given you now, we were kind of like, yeah, I, I agree. Players should make those plays. And we thought that we were at a point now. Oh my God. Agrees with us, right? It became uh, where too many passes were forced through and that kind of got to be Very bad status. pass. He should have dumped it in. We could this year turn back on what we're calling kind of like these reflex. Yeah, it's icing though. So if you're not able to react fast enough or have enough time to play a nice clean 
pick up reception your player can still play a reflex reaction so they can kind of flinch with their skate or, or that kind of stuff and, and again I'll, I'll that sounds good I like that explain exactly how we executed that but yeah it really was adding in these reflex reactions to reward players from being in good position and the goal from my side was to say that most players yeah the poke checking was just well, awful sort of like every single time you pass it almost looked like every single time they would automatically get it talking about what he talked about previously but maybe some of these better players would have more range or they do a better job with saucer passes and that kind of stuff. So with that, I'll throw it to Tyson to kind of explain again sort of how the attributes weigh in. Wonderful backhand. Some of the Animations for goalies in the crease are look almost yeah, exactly the same. Much better I imagine most of it's going to be the same. Pickups and intercepts in itself, whether you can react to it at all. So if somebody's powering a pass right beside you, you may not be able to react to it at all. Then the next levels, if you can react to it and just throw in like a poke check or skate or something like that, which you may incidentally hit the puck or you may not based off some of your defensive awareness or mostly defensive awareness, actually, since that's kind of like your reaction time stat on the defensive side of things. And then whether you can get to the puck position, but you bobble it if it's too hot to handle, if it's not a flat pass and that kind of ties into your hand eye if it's in channel the air, man they're gonna see you man you kind of receive that knock it down be honest, so you gotta be careful. and then puck control is more on the side of if you can just receive it off the ice and then the fourth is if you receive it clean so that factors in your defensive awareness your hand eye if it's in the air your puck control if it's on the ice and then i think users should notice a lot more nuance there instead of last year where it was very kind of you either picked off the pass or your player didn't react to it at all which obviously feels really bad if you're sitting in the lane and the player you're controlling just doesn't do anything it just makes them look unaware and unathletic so we wanted to what a kind of save by mike smith of if you can react to the puck or if you can grab it clean or not. And then we added a lot more animation coverage for intercepting passes with both your stick, your skate, if it's in the air, if it's on the ice. There's a ton of new animation for both normal players and then even players with the ability have even more animations and coverage that they can disrupt passes more so in the air and kind of more reaching ones i guess is where we put most of the emphasis for some of those x-factor abilities overall like players across the board will have much more not too fan of x-factors at least get a piece of passes uh, i guess it, it's an explanation i'm not really like interacting with them too much i can't really i, I didn't play too much of the beta so I, can't, I won't be able to really tell, and a lot of them weren't unlocked from the get-go anyway, so... I guess it just really comes down to, um... Yeah, being able to unlock them over time now. None of the... Because since, since it was all online, it was just your own player, right? You set up your own player, whatever. Can't really use any of the NHL players in beta, so... Yeah. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Like honestly, I'm probably gonna be end up just doing like a full-on franchise. Uh, I love that it's a little bit more. It's not as dark anymore. It's a little bit more brighter. Um, you know, everyone's uh, everything's a little bit more visualized. Um, I'm I'm wondering this what's gonna happen with franchise. I, I believe there's a deep dive coming up for franchise mode. So, wow, nice move, dry saddle. Kind of like how I was sort of mentioning off the top of looking at sort of the core meta of our game and how it plays, and then looking back to the real world. Wow. Ooh, like did Smith get a piece of that? He think I think he did. Try sell. Come on, man. Ooh, backhand. Yeah. We don't want them to just be things Is that Blackwood? No, it's Blackwood in that, right? Yeah. In the reality of hockey. So last year, for example, we had made some of the changes around pivots because uh, the way our skate model worked players were able to kind of start accelerating and gain speed. For example, if they're skating backwards and then they need to pivot to skate forwards if they're going to get burned, they would start... I thought it was going to pass. Okay, McDavid. Really kind That's of smart. That's smart. That first foot nice play. Unlike the real world where... Was not expecting... Blackwood, I mean, to team, drop it off. Step or not so not a good idea do, if you're playing against the, <laughs> the McDavid line. <laughs> exactly. That was a mistake. Gaps, and then when we nice. 16 goals. Hi, man. There's so much Seattle. More.
See how the logo looks so nice. Has a higher rating, and they're pretty sure that they're fresh. They have a full stamina. Like, why are they getting burned? And it can really be the difference. Like, like we see these NHL players play, and the difference in a breakaway or not, or a player splitting the defense, or getting behind a defensive player to to get a pass. Like, these are single steps sometimes, and. There aren't many players in the NHL that can play on a daily basis that, that get caught because of speed. So for us in our game, it can be a really finite difference, and I think it really comes down to that. And it's, it's not really to kind of make excuses around it, but it's, it's, it's something that we're interested in to kind of go, what do we need to kind of emphasize when it comes to gameplay meta, maybe that sort of is or isn't sort of realistic like we need to understand why players are experiencing these things in our games because you can be really quick with your thumb or, or when you're viewing the game from a higher view Ooh, nice. Eyes, there's, there's different ways that reaction time plays out there so even sometimes when we're realistic it may not give the same sense of what it's like for players on the ice to, to lose that step or not so i think that plays into it as well nice. and then the Ooh, other thing is pooch. we have different games right place right games, time so like players will know this really well but all of our yeah I'm, I'm wondering you know how that stamina thing is going to work out because like for me like yes going after every shift going sitting down getting fresh for an extra a few full bars afterwards like that's okay but i like i'm wondering like how it's going to progress between like the first and second and the second and third um and you know is it going to go down per player right like if you have back-to-back -back games are you going to be having this, you know, 100% stamina the next night and 100% um, in your overall bar for the next night? Like, it, uh, something similar to FIFA, right? Like, I think that's absolutely necessary. Now, yes, they're on skates, but a lot of people, there's a misconception that people on skates, they don't have to do as much. They, don't have, they can just glide, and when in reality, it's not that at all. What a goal. Um, so we'll see how, how that works out. Um, if they don't, if they didn't implement it this year, then that's something maybe they can implement the next year. Um, I'm, I'm honestly hoping like better crowds. Um, I'm, I'm hoping like the be a pro is, it, it, I've never really touched it, but if, I really hope it's expanded to the extent where you can, wow, what a goal. Nice rebound. Um, it gets expanded to the to the point where you can walk around in the arena. Um, say fans are coming to the arena and you want to go say hi to fans. You can go anywhere in the arena, like an open world type thing. You can go down. You can go to any section and just like sit there and you know kind of take in you know vibes of the game. If you are injured, um, I have the ability to you know sit from the press box and watch the game with the gm kind of thing i think that would be pretty cool um because you know like I, I used to at one point not play any of the games and just sim everything and if i could do something similar to that but uh, with a player or even um as a general manager just like sit up there build a team and you know hope for the best then guess what i'll, I'll do that um but at the same time, those features have not been, um, you know, have not been requested as much as, you know, I, I would have thought they would have been requested. So we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, like it's, it's, it's tough to say, right? Like there's a lot of stuff that's been neglected, especially franchise mode. Uh, a lot of online uh, emphasis on online play. Um, a lot of changes to online play. Um, for me personally, I, I think it really comes down to them um, not moving away from online as much, um, because of course we don't want to neglect them either, those people who play online. Um, but just, you know, put a bit more emphasis on uh, franchise and, you know, you know, having, you know, a higher budget to maintain your arena, for example, and people know what I'm talking about on there. Like, you get such a small amount, and you get maybe 30,000, 40,000 and every now and then for playing good, but that's nothing compared to the amount it takes to, like, upgrade your arena or maintain your arena or the certain sections, lower bowl, upper bowl, concessions, bathrooms, parking. Like, the, there's no way to actually maintain them after after it goes below 50. You, you go goes before 50, you, you could go to 100, and after that, you can't change it until the next season. Like, that's how much... Yeah, so like, 
it's and, 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 and then that way it's harder to keep your um you know your um you know fan and um you know fan morale or i think it's fan morale uh, high as high as you want it to be so we'll see how that you know kind of plays into uh, franchise but wow what a hit um so yeah I, I can't wait to play some franchise i'm i usually don't pay full price for fifa fifa or nhl games or like any ea games um but you know it's been two years since uh you know there's been an uh technically an next gen like a year since the next gen but there was no like next gen option last year so it's always still a ps4 version um so i might end up you know picking up uh nhl Maybe uh, not on launch day, maybe a couple days later if there's like a used copy available, you know, maybe <laughs> just grab that and pay the extra couple of dollars if anything goes wrong during the year and get a new copy kind of thing. Um, you know, ho hopefully um, someone ends up trading in NHL <laughs> for something else. <laughs> um, because I think, yeah, I think EB Games has like a thing like where you can play it for a week and if you don't like it for any reason, just bring it back kind of thing. So I, I like that kind of... Uh, you know that offer that EB Games are actually it's GameStop now. Um, EB Games is switching to GameStop in in Vancouver, uh, in Canada actually in general. So I, I can't wait to uh, get my hands on the game. Um, I'm probably gonna end up doing like daily episodes of franchise mode. Um, I'm trying to try to like something similar to what's his name. Uh, I think it's like Mark Goldbridge or something who does like FIFA stuff. Um, there's a Mark uh, meme channel. That's how I got introduced to him. He does uh, a lot of gameplay through um, uh, for Manchester United. I love FIFA as well, so I might end up choosing Manchester. Um, trying to might pick up. That's a nice goal. Might pick up a few good players, some younger players, some older players, and you know some kind of up and coming. Um, I, I'm thinking like Holland would be a great addition to. Man U, I think that's what they're trying to do. But hey, enough about FIFA for now. <laughs> let's let's focus on the NHL and uh, yeah, let's hope for the best in the next next little bit. I think we got about yeah, we got about six minutes left, a little over. Ice looks amazing. I I don't think it does um, the game justice to watch it from a you know, a computer screen. This is um, I think this is in 1080p right now. So, I, I think it really comes down to um, playing it on a 4K screen. Now, I, I'm I'm hoping that it's gonna be 4K 60 frames per second, but um, something tells me that it might be 4K 30 frames per second. And if it's on on the you know the uh, old gen, you um, like the PS4 and um, Xbox One, you're looking at be 1080 1080 60 for them I, I think it would be smart for them to do 1080 60 for them but knowing EA sometimes you know you can't really hope for that much uh, but wow what a move Colos Colosar with those two moves man come on now uh, <laughs> um, yeah it, it'll see I'm, I'm hoping for 4k 60 frames of course that's something if, even if it doesn't come at you know day one I, I would greatly appreciate it uh, later on um, um, I don't know how long um, and how many seasons I'm going to be playing uh, for NHL. Um, I usually do five minute periods um, and then realistic penalties. So any penalties that are I, I accrue or the team um, causes, uh, opposition causes, they're all two minutes full. So some games could be done in like 20 to 25 minutes. Some take 30 to 35 um, because of the amount of penalties um, that are given out um, during my franchise mode, so um, and I'm a Canucks guy, so the Canucks guy, he, yeah. Sometimes I could get frustrated. Sometimes I would make some bad moves. Oh my God, Kucherov! Oh ho ho! Oh ho! That was good. But yeah, like when they choose the Canucks, um, the players are not bad. They got a lot of. They got rid of a lot of their grit. Um, you know, with Beagle, Roussel, um, but then, the, and you know, Louis not good. You know, but, you know, that one shot Louis in the preseason was good though. Uh, um, but they, they did pick up Garland, uh, Lawson. They both looked pretty good in preseason so far. So I can't wait to see what they do. Um, I'm gonna see what happens with my fantasy league too. Um, 
I'm, I really hope I get a top five pick, but uh, you know, like a like a mid tier pick, like a six or a seven, would is not bad either, because then you're not waiting as long for your um, you know, your picks. Now, if you do get first overall, you get two picks in a row the next time you pick, so that's good. But uh, I don't, I don't even know if I want to do like a franchise uh, fantasy draft. I, I might do like a fantasy draft specifically um, for like a single video. I might not do like a franchise mode, like uh, episodically for you know um, for my team because I want to feel like I'm actually pushing myself to get you know get the Stanley Cup now every single time I played NHL I've won the cup <laughs> I've like I've, I've been trying to find a good balance and it was only last year when I started to mess around with the sliders and everything so yeah it, it would really um, see how you know how this game plays and if it plays with a decent amount of um, you know, difficulty. Um, I, I play. I th oh, what do I play on? Is it pro and then prof then all star? I think I play on pro or something or semi pro. Um, I, I'm drawing a blank now, but yeah, like I think it's underneath all star. And then, oh my God, what a save by Flurry! Um, so we'll see. Um, kind of how that goes. Um, yeah, it, it, it will be nice to see, <clears throat> you know, who, what I can, you know, cook up in in franchise mode. So I I can't wait. I don't know how many times I've said that, but I'm like you know, we got a lot of good prospects. I don't think I really need to pick up any players. Um, Pokolzin, finally I'll be able to play with Pokolzin. I'm probably gonna end up having Pokolzin on the second line and Pearson on the th on the third because. But at the same time, if I wanna, if I don't wanna pay Pokolzin like big big money, you know, after his contract is over, then I might keep him on the third and just have him play there with like a Mott and a Mott and a and a Sutter. But you know, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. So hopefully they'll be kind to us and share with us the things that we can improve as opposed to using examples of things that don't go right as a reason to go, oh, this, this should get turned off or should be changed. I really hope that it is embraced. And from the early feedback from the technical test, I think that it is going well. But I really hope that this is this is only the start of being able to do more with that feature and for us to get the stick in physics in more and more cases, like like away from the puck. My Canucks, man. It's my Canucks. New no, Dimmer. Oshi, man. Why, man? You're only supposed to be good and shoot us. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, she's pretty good. <laughs> All right. I did a lot of talking over everything. Um, there was the Q&A that they just mentioned, so maybe we can check that out. Um, so, um, at one of my changes, passing, passing, recession. I do slower patch up, catch up to the faster ones. Um, yeah, that, I think I talked over that quite a bit. Um, but at the same time, we did listen to a spite and what the impact of new physics. Um, I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out like if I oh, um, if we're looking at gameplay overall, it does look pretty good. Now I I don't know if they wrote. Did they write everything out as well? The so this is basically yeah. L l let's let's read over this. You know, you know the few Q like I, I you know I'm not gonna listen to the full Q A right I'm Q and A right now. That's something I'll do on my own time. I just want to react to the gameplay along with them talking about it. It talks about new depth to passing and puck receptions. A revised meta to passing and puck reception expands on player differential and extends the skill gap in competitive play. Players will have to think more about the impacts of their moves from the strength and accuracy, the pressure and reception of their passes. So uh, that's probably, you know, um, a lot to do with rookies and, um, say, veterans and, you know, how much of a gap in, in competitiveness there is. Uh, and, you know, 
the impact of their skill moves. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how that kind of contributes to everything. Um, obviously, passing and puck perceptions had to get improved, and I feel like it was decent enough in the technical um, test um, when I did um, try it out. Um, but again, it, it just really comes down to actually getting your hand on the final product and I might not get it hands on day one, but I will probably get it in the same week. Um, at least I believe it comes out on October 14th or 15th. So I'm hoping before the 25th at latest to get it done. Um, a lot of hockey games to go to through this year, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, let's go to stick physics and add depth and realism to puck position battles for contested putts. Now players can more efficiently use strength and body position to their advantage, which results in more organic fights for possession, position and puck possession. I've I've really, not really um, myself done much in terms of protecting the puck and stuff. I uh, skate up the ice. You know, I might use the the L2 button to like kind of skate backwards or skate to the side and move to the left and score a goal. But I've not really done any, um, you know, I've not really, prote you know, protected the puck away. Um, oh, how do I explain it? Uh, along with uh, someone trying to, you know, you know, grab the puck from me, like the opposition. So, yeah, I, I'm drawing a blank now. What was I going to say? I was going to make such a good point. Totally forgot about it. <laughs> but yeah, let's just go on to the next one. All new deflection system. The players with the best hand-eye can really make all these lives difficult with all new deflection system that allows everything from a subtle wrist flick for deflecting a shot up and over a waiting glove to a more skillful move to pivot and pull a puck back against the grain. Uh, new free reflex disrupt, uh, disrupt system for defenders with a new reflex disrupt system for sticks, skates, legs, and defenders can break up more passes and play plays to reduce offensive scoring um, stanches as well. New puck protect net drive system. Player can now drive the net with more force. Use their uh, lead arm to fend off sticks from opposition. So I think this will kind of contribute to uh, making sure that there are not um, as much um, you know tips, deflections, um, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so I, I think that is a pretty decent thing. If you can drive the net a little bit, uh, with a little bit more force, it will help um, prevent your opposition from you know scoring a goal or getting to that next rebound. Um, new shot and pass block system. Few, uh, players feel more alive and nice as they slide into position to block shots, breaking up passing lanes. Watch as they react to pass in real time. Players may even extend a limb to get a piece of the puck that would otherwise go past them. So I think that would. Um, that, that that will contribute um, to the game, um, I think, in a different way, considering they are, you know, um, they do have an all def new deflection system. So if 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 they're gonna if, if an opposition player uh, say shoots the puck and it's near near the ice, but they're it's say four or five inches off the ice and it hits the player to try to block the shot, I I really hope it does react. Um, pretty um similarly um in terms of you know um a normal deflection off a stick would and how a, i want to see how a goalie reacts to that as well um so yeah we'll see how that goes ability to reverse hit and brace for hits puck carriers can fight their way through collision with perfectly timed braces or even the favor, leaving the incoming checker on the ice. I think we saw some examples of that in the gameplay. Um, some big hits I reacted to. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see um, what people think about, you know, the reverse hitting and everything. I think that will be a huge, huge addition to, like, um, playoff series. Um, you know, as small as it might be, I think fighting in, in the playoffs is absolutely huge. I never used to like fighting, but now I'm like, yeah, it just adds a little bit more the oomph to the, you know, to the overall atmosphere of playing a playoff game, or even like against a rival during the um, division rival during the season, or a, you know, uh, you know, a team rival like a franchise team rival overall. So we we'll see how that goes. Um, I don't think it's necessary to go into um, uh, the uh, you know the technical uh, test update. That's because that's it's that's kind of explained here already. Uh, improvements of pa you know uh, passes and everything. And the technical update is more meant for 
Um, um, more for online play anyways, and he did say there's some fixes to online play, specifically for online play as well. Um, I, I guess... I guess there is some um, benefits here. Like, I, I, I guess I could read through it. Um, like, I'll read through what I'm most interested in. Um, and it, it's it's uh, possibly goalies, um, goalies and um, the general um, options. So let's actually look at um, goalies. Yeah, um, fix to stop goalies from looking around screens during faceoffs and play for a foul outside the zone. So yeah, like that's that's something that goalies never really moved around and did. Um, but then again, they're saying they're fixed to stop goalies from. Looking around screens during faceoffs, like uh, play far outside the zone. I, I guess it really depends, right? Yeah, that's a small issue, but fixed an issue where human goalie's reaction time would be too high when having to move a limb a larger distance, allowing them to sit deep in their net and have success. Okay, proof flinch days while the AI always leaning against the post and butterfly. Various goal scoring balance improvements, AI goalie poke check for frequency tuning, uh, improved user. Uh, goalie spread um, V and butterfly mechanical consistency uh, improve AI contortionist save trigger logic um, which I'm, again that kind of comes into the you know the uh, X factors which I'm, I'm not a huge fan of but you know it is what it is uh, fixed an issue with goalies would drop in a already covered puck if they were poke check that is that is that's right yeah um that, that, that I like, that I like for sure. Um, and then, of course, there's so much to s shooting and skating, but I'm not going to go into too much. I just wanted to go into the goalies, which I'm most interested in, even though I don't play as much goalie. Um, general, vibration tuning and fixes for crazy when vibration wouldn't turn off. I, I, I guess that does come into play with, um, um, you know, uh, certain instances and... Oh my god, I'm drawing the I'm drawing a blank on the on the term here, um, where you don't want certain vibrations for certain actions, um, like uh, for example the haptic. There you go. Remember the term there. Uh, fixing issue where players were able to perform actions to extend the goal post goal sequence. Um, post goal sequence. I would wouldn't mind the post goal sequence to be longer like what, what was wrong. Like I guess that's what they're talking about. Various improvements to preserving proper momentum when a player would trip. That I like. Um, fix uh, for shot blocks that were being picked off instead of um, diving poke checks. Okay, that's pretty good. Employ flinch logic for kneeling pass blocks. Various X factor ability in tuning logic improvements. Fix pro am penalty logic where regular chips from non diving players were being called. Good for that as well. Various crash and desync fixes. Good as well. So yeah, honestly, that's all I really wanted to talk about. There's if you wanted to, um, you know, go back. Um, to the video, go to uh, underneath. Um, if you wanted to, um, you know, uh, view the full hour, I'll, I'll put the link um, to this video um, in in my description as well. So then you guys have a better idea of, um, you know, what is fully been put in the gameplay. Obviously, the hour long one, I'll personally, like I said, I'm gonna watch later. I'm not gonna upload the reaction to that. That's a that's a lot, uh, right? So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Other than that. That's pretty much it. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, I give some, you know, commentary during the gameplay myself. I talked about the features I wanted to, um, that I'm most looking forward to. Um, overhead gameplay looked pretty decent. Um, you know, the eyes look pretty decent. Reflections look pretty nice. Gameplay looks almost all, um, almost the same with the additions to how deflections um, are put. Uh, backwards skating in terms of backward, yeah, like hitting backwards as well. Um, you've seen those hits before um, in the form of, I guess, hip checks, I guess you can say. Um, there's a lot to look at. So, yeah, um, remember, guys, subscribe uh, right in, in underneath the video. Uh, hit the hit the bell for notifications. Uh, if you're going to go through my Facebook page, uh, make sure you like and follow on Facebook. Thank you very much. And other than that, I think that's pretty much it. I think we discussed whatever we need to discuss. So I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.